Hey, all you Razorback fans out there, this is going to be a little bit of a different podcast today because the head coach of Western Carolina, Kerwin Bell, will be joining me on the podcast today. So we had a chance to catch up with him and record a really great interview that was really insightful. And just want to remind everybody that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn, that these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions do apply. I know that there's a lot of stuff and excitement going on with Razorback football, getting ready for Western Carolina. And tomorrow on the podcast, we're going to give all of our final predictions when it comes to players, when it comes to the team itself, get into all of that. And I'm sure they will be hundred percent right. And nobody will remember them whatsoever, but we'll do that tomorrow. But right now let's hear from the man himself, the head coach of the Western Carolina Catamounts, Kerwin Bell. All right, so we got Arkansas game week taking on the Western Carolina Catamounts this weekend in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium. And there may not be many Razorback fans that know a whole lot about the Western Carolina football team, but who better to talk to and to preview their team as well as this game than the head coach himself, Coach Kerwin Bell of Western Carolina. And Coach, really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. How you doing? Hey, doing good. We're um, we're getting ready to go up there, and hopefully it won't be too hot, but um, – we're going to be ready to go play a good game. Yeah. So I'm just asking as a former player, former great player, and then as a coach now, does this time of year, do you get the feeling of, man, I, I can still go out there and play. I want to still go out there and hit somebody. Like, does it start to hit you around this time of year as a player and also a coach? Uh, you just feel all those aches and pains. That's all you feel. But uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, man, maybe, maybe a couple of years ago, but now I've got to the point where I'm like, listen, I thought I could give you one or two plays. I can't give you anything no more. So uh, I'm, I'm just a coach now, but, um, I enjoy, I enjoy, like, I thought I, I got into coach, you know, cause I got so old. I couldn't play anymore. I was 34. I think when I retired from the Canadian football league and, um, I got in, I, I wanted to be a coach and, and, but man, I, I realized like, it's more than just winning games. It's like, you it's, think about it it's the, to me, it's the best job in America. Cause you got a chance to take young men when they're going through probably the most crucial time of their life, 18 to 22. They're leaving their families. They're having to make big, important decisions. And we get to be a part of that and help sort of lead them in the right direction. So uh, coaching has been great for me, man. I don't – I love playing, but now I, I really enjoy being a coach and, and being especially a coach on the college level. Well, heading into this season, coaches, tell us about your team. I know that uh, you've been doing some great things with the offense and. I know that there's definitely always things that as a football team you want to work on and improve on from the season before. So just how are you feeling about your team overall heading into this season? Well, you know, building a program, we've always been good offensively everywhere we've been. You know, I think we've led the nation, the whole nation, uh, two or three times. We've been in the top five, maybe six or seven other times in my 14 years as a head coach. So uh, that's always been big for us. And um, we've here we've been – close to being great here on offense. We, I thought, you know, last year, I think we were fifth or sixth in the nation in score in total offense, but didn't score enough. We um, settled for field goals way too much. So we, we made a concerted effort to be better in the red zone. Our, our penalties and our, um, our turnover ratio was terrible. I think we were last in our league and we still finished six and five. So we got a very talented football team. They were young last year. We're continuing to grow. We've got bigger. Um, but we feel like we're building it the right way. You know, the portal's been good for people in different areas. You know, some people have been great transfer, getting transfers. We've got a few, but what's helped us is go get these young kids in high school that have been dropped because of the portal, right? Because now instead of every school getting 20 high school kids, they're maybe only getting 10, and the other 10 are portal guys. So it's leaving a lot of really talented players, and we're big in South Florida and Florida because of my connections there, and we feel like we've got some very talented kids now. What it is, it's made us young, right? We've had to go to young route. We've got a lot of freshmen and sophomores on, on this team. But we feel like if we continue to grow, we've got the skill level now. I think we've changed over 100, 100 out of the 120 players on our roster, our new players the last two years. So now we've got to just keep developing them and keep keep developing that linkage that you need. I think that DNA sort of – I call it DNA championship you got to have. Uh, to win a championship, and I think we're, we're starting to do that. I've seen that the last three games. We won the last three games of the season last year, and so now we've started becoming more of a football team that trust each other, that believe in each other, that want to win for each other. And um, so I feel good. You know, our, our statement this offseason was championship or bust. 
Uh, and I think it's great. I tell our team all the time, man, you realize 18, 19, 20, 21 years ago, you were born to be here, to be here at Western Carolina, do something that nobody else has ever done in the history of the school. And that's to win the Southern Conference Championship. So that that's our goal. That's what we want to do. I think Arkansas will expose a lot of things that we need to work on. And that's the way we don't look at it. We don't have a lot of – there's no nothing better than live reps and going against a great football team. And that's what we're going to get to do this Saturday. And we're going to – listen, we're not going to run the ball and try to run the clock. We don't go shoot every bullet we got and and try to be as aggressive as we can be to score points. So um, I tell people all the time, they'll say, man, did you – I see you, you know, you got to hold on to the ball. I said, shoot, I that clock don't say – when it comes to winning or losing, they don't say, oh, you held the ball more than the other teams, so you get to win. No, it's points. So we're trying to score points, and that's what we'll do on Saturday. Coach, you, you mentioned uh, some of the things I know you've been working on with your team, and you mentioned turnovers and penalties and a lot of things that plagued your team a little bit last season. Uh, you know, if you have offense or defense, it's always like, oh, you can just get uh, better players or you can you know, change up the scheme a little bit. But when it comes to those mental mistakes, just as a coach, how do you get your team better to improve on that to make sure that those types of mistakes don't happen at the rate that they happened last year? Well, I think I think a little bit of it is the youthfulness, right? The being young, so young, uh, having a young quarterback that played, you know, true freshman played a lot last year for us. Um, but but listen, it's the worst season I've ever had as a head coach. I've been successful. You're successful. I think all coaches are successful because first of all, you are not a high penalized football team, and you your turnover ratio has got to be great. You got to know how to take care of the football and how to create turnovers. And we've always been great in that. We've been. We've been in double digits pluses and double digits every every year for me. Last year we were negative in that area, so yeah, we've got to find a way. And what we we just preached it the whole off season. You're not going to play on this side of the ball on offense if you can't take care of the football. Um, and so, I think with a year though more of experience, I think we will do a better job in that area. And um, one thing too, what we've done is you know defensively we didn't have we feel like a lot a lot of ball hawks back there. I, I want to recruit guys when the ball's in the air. By God, they they got a chance to come down with it and 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 change the game. And I think we're starting to create some young kids that play like that. When the ball's in the air, they become offensive players and, and create turnovers. And so I think that's another way to, to, to sort of help that ratio. So I think we're making improvements, um, but we just got to continue to focus on those areas and make sure we get better because – I think it's amazing that we went six and five with a young football team that was last in our league in penalties, last in turnovers, last in red zone defense. I mean, if we can just go halfway up the chart on those things, how good can we really be? You know, it just tells you we have the talent level to get it done, even with not being as disciplined as we need to be. So as we grow, we need to make sure we we have a concerted effort to improve in those areas. But you want to ask you about a particular player because obviously you have a, an offense that can get going in different ways. But Desmond Reed is a player that's pretty fascinating because uh, I know that uh, last year he had close to a thousand yards rushing and uh, seeing his size and everything too, and knowing where he's from, he's got extreme speed. Just w what can you tell us about him and maybe the season that you're expecting him to have to build upon last year's success? Well, Desmond's one of our many guys who had FBS offers, right? And uh, what happens is people don't realize. They say, why did these guys get dropped? Well, what happens is they on film, you put on the film, he's an FBS football player. I tell our guy, I told our guys our day, skill level, they ain't going to be better than us. Because, by God, I don't recruit you if you ain't got FBS skill level. You don't have the skill level. You don't be able to throw as good as them. You don't be able to catch as good as them. You don't be able to run. Now, they're 240, and you're 170. Uh, that's why they're at Arkansas. They've been blessed with a beautiful, great bodies, right? And big, big athletic guys. That's why they're in SEC. So now we got to overcome that with our heart and our grit. When you're playing a bigger guy, that's what it's going to take for us to even compete to to be able to do that. So, but he's one of those guys. He got dropped. I think you know the college coaches get down there and didn't see him in person, and he's five seven, hundred and seventy pounds, and so they drop him, even though on film he's an FBS player. I've had Miami coaches. I've been well connected in South Florida, and they've told me he's been the best back come through there in ten years. They're talking about guys that went to Clemson and get Florida State. I mean, he's that. They thought he's that talented. The high school coaches did, and I that's who I, I that's my conviction when I recruit. I, I'm going to get football players that can flat out play explosive. I don't care if they look like misfit toys. You know, they're five seven or whatever. They don't if they can flat out play. We're not playing the game of basketball. We're playing football. Right. So I don't need a guy five, you know, six, three. So 
he's he's four three. He's dynamic. He had a high ankle sprain. Still ran for close to nine hundred yards. So we think he's got a chance to be special. And um, you know, we he's a ball of muscle. He he. One thing you know, people say, well, how do you get these little guys to perform? Well, first of all, you don't get a little guy if he's scared, right? They can't play at this level. But if you find a guy who's a tough customer and that's physical when he plays the game of football and he's small, now he got to get banged up a little bit, but them guys can be successful at this level. And I think Desmond's a big, big proof of that. He's a, he tries to run through. I don't care what size you are. He's going to try to run through you and finish runs at the end of runs. And so he's a, he's a really good football player. We'll continue our discussion with Kerwin Bell here in just a second. But folks, I want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the best qualified candidates available, so that's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So all you got to do is go to linkedin.com slash college, and when you go there, add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to show that you're actually hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with the right skill set and experience so you can get the quickly prioritized events when it comes to the best hires possible. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus their leading competitors. So LinkedIn Jobs helps you find those qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job See, for with free. Coach Kerwin Bell, the head coach of the apply. Western Carolina Academies here on the show. So, Coach, just looking at Arkansas, you mentioned that, hey, you're going to go in there with the mentality that you're going to win. You're going to do the things that you need to do to win. But what do you make of the Razorback football team this season? There's a lot of new faces in the coaching staff and new faces on a lot of parts of the team, but still K.J. Jefferson, still Rocket Sanders, still some of these guys that were on a team and had success last season. Just what do you make of the Razorbacks and uh, the type of team that you expect to see on Saturday? Well, I think they've done a great job up front on defense, uh, bringing in some defensive linemen that's added a lot of depth for them. And I know in that SEC, man, you gotta, you better be good up front, right? And so I think they've done a really good job of making improvements there, getting depth. Uh, you're gonna have to have that to to win in that in that conference throughout the season. Uh, and then listen, if you've got a quarterback like KJ, uh, man, he is talented, big, athletic, can do everything. Uh, and you got a kid like Rocket. You know, Rocket, Wayne Younger is the head coach for Rocket down in Florida. So I'd known – I remember back when Rocket was coming out and, and Wayne was so upset because some of the Florida schools weren't really high on him, you know. And um, and I know Wayne was sort of upset. like, this guy's going to be special. And sure enough, he's – you know, he's the best in the SEC. And he's 240 pounds. So key for us, you know, they are so good in, with those two guys, maybe t- best two combo in the in the country. Uh, Arkansas should look, you know, with the new D line and and now with the special quarterback, you got a chance, man. I believe you got to have that com- combination. You got to have a guy that can go win games for you at the quarterback position, and you have that. So this is going to be a, a good football team, I think, throughout the whole season, and and even in the SEC, as tough as it is, I think they're going to have a, a really good year. So, Coach, I'm curious when you brought up that thing about Rocket. Do you have any idea of maybe why the Florida schools weren't too high on him? Because he was a four star player coming out of high school. It seemed like he had you know good size and speed yeah. and everything. So, so why would they not be too high on Rocket or at least recruiting him heavily? You know, I, I can't remember exactly what people were telling. Yeah, you know, I think he played him at receiver some too, maybe in high school. Right. So they didn't see all the running ability. Um, and he wasn't as big now as he is, or back then. Uh, but man, he's turned himself into. a the best in the SEC. I mean, you run 1,400 yards in that conference, you can flat out play. So uh, that's going to be a big key for us. You know, we've got – that's been a big point for us is to be a better tackling football team. And it's going to be a challenge to get those two guys on the ground. So, you know, hopefully we're going to be able to do that and, and limit them. You know, they're going to get yards. and They don't move the football. But just don't make it easy on them, right? Make it tough. Get them on the ground. Make them earn those, those touchdowns or field goals and – and give us a chance to stay in the game. If we can do that, I'll, I'll be very pleased with the outcome. So, Coach, also something that was at least a point of notice for a lot of Razorback fans was the time change of the game itself. Uh, some Razorback fans were not too thrilled about it because now their tailgating's got to start a little bit earlier. But, hey, it's not about the fans. It's about the safety of the fans itself. But as far as your involvement and what, when you found out, what was the process of that like, and what do you make of the time change going from 3 p.m. kickoff to a noon kickoff? Well, I, I think, it, it, you know, they uh, the only – my D, uh, director of football operations, DFO, came to me on Saturday and said it could be a possibility. They would know on Monday. 
Um, for sure. Did I have any problem with it? Um, you know, I said on my end, I was fine. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's, you wonder, you say, well, 12 o'clock, shouldn't that be the hottest? <laughs> you always think 12 o'clock is hot, but I understand, you know, three o'clock is probably the hottest part. And then you also have the morning to, you know, your warm ups won't be quite as bad as far as warming up and getting ready. And so hopefully it's still help our players, but for us just to get back earlier too, you know, listen, we, that's the one thing I hate about this, this season for us is our schedule. Uh, man, I've never, we've always played, you know, started our conference games third or fourth week. Most conferences do, right? You get all the non conference out of the way. But we wind up playing, we got to come back here. So we got to get back here early, get our guys in the training room, get them healthy, get them to go 100 miles an hour in the next week against Sanford, who let, beat our or won our conference last year. So we got them at home. But that's the, this next two weeks will be crucial for us to get off to a good start. So, to me, getting back as early as I could was good with us. And, and um, you know, so that's – I think it's still play out good for us as far as getting ready for that second game. So as a coach, when you bring bring up times, I guess, in traveling, is it is it better or do you prefer it to be an earlier morning or, you know, 11 a.m. noon game type of earlier in the day type deal when you're on the road just to, to get back early? Is that just a constant thing that you – if you had your choice, all your road games, all your travel games always <laughs> earlier in the day? Yeah, I think – I don't, you know, I don't know about 11 o'clock. Somebody was saying earlier <laughs> when they, because your team's got to get up so early. And, and, um, but I like, you know, I think 12, one, two to me is the perfect time because you got up, you get your pregame meal, you get in a good routine that morning. Uh, and then you can also play the game and then get back, you know, at a, at a decent hour. So, um, to me, I think this, this will work out good for our football team for what we got to face the next week. I think it'll be good for us. Coach, I know I just got a few minutes left with you. So I'm curious, you, you were a former player, great player in the SEC at Florida, and you've been a coach for a long time now. You've played professionally. You know, you've been around football pretty much your entire life. And one of the biggest things is just how much college football is changing uh, overall. It seemed like not even just, oh, well, over 10 to 15 years. We're talking about in a year and a half, two years. It seems like the entire game has changed. Just what are your thoughts on the major changes of college football, whether it's NIL, transfer portal, things of that nature, and also – the future of college football, because there's a lot of uncertainty that people look around and it's like, we don't know what this is even going to look like here in the next year or two. Yeah, it's totally, it has changed a lot. And you better adapt as a head coach or you're not going to survive. I can tell you that. And one, and what I mean by that, I, you know, my first 12 years, 11 years, I was the OC also as being the head coach and never thought I'd turn that, that responsibility over to anybody. Cause I love, you know, creating great offenses. And that was a big thing for me. Uh, but luckily my son played for me and man, he started calling the game in 18 when we went to the national championship, led the whole entire nation, 52 points a game, went undefeated, won the division two national championship at Valdosta state. And, um, so ever since then, I've sort of gave him total control and it's really worked out at the perfect time because listen, nowadays, head coaches better be head coaches. Uh, it's hard. It's hard now to me. I know Lane Kiffin, some of them guys have talked about this to be sort of the offensive coordinator and the head coach now, it's hard because in the off season, what happens if you're the coordinator and you're running that offense, you're in there doing self-scouting. You're in there working on new stuff for the spring and for next year and looking at the opponents. And so you're in the, you're in these meeting rooms all day and you're not spending time with your players. By God, now you better be out there with your players. I, I, so it, what it's done to me is made me a, a really just a head coach. And that's what I think you got to do because you got to be when they're out there lifting. You better be over there watching them lift. You better they better know that you care about them, that you're building a relationship with them, because they can leave now because of this portal. And so, we've got to make sure it's no no more of the days where when they hear they're here for four years. You know, you ain't got to worry about it. now. You've got to make sure they understand that you you're there to make them the best football player you can be. If that's all season workouts, whatever, you're there watching and you're there involved in their life. And so. I feel like that's got to be a big change for a lot of coaches or you're not going to be successful. You don't have a lot of guys leaving. So I think that's been big for us is I've turned everything over to my son and my office line coach. I really believe in him. Uh, Jeremy Darvo, who coached with me at Valdez State. We won the national championship as far as the run game. So it's really freed me up to be a true head, head football coach. Coach, last one before I let you get out of here. I, I heard that you have never been to the state of Arkansas before, or at least uh, not really any connections, which is a pretty wild thing considering I know that Florida, when you played there, Arkansas was not in the SEC just yet, so you didn't have a chance to play them. So my question for you is, is that if you've never been to Arkansas or, or played against Arkansas or anything, 
when you think of Arkansas, what do you think of first? Is it a particular team or a football team or a player? Is it, you know, Walmart? <laughs> is it Johnny Cash? Like, <laughs> like, what is it when you hear the state of Arkansas? What's kind of the thing you first think about or think of? Oh, um, shoot. What's the, and I know now you say, well, why do you think about him? You don't even remember his name. What's the big quarterback that played receiver with the Jaguars? Oh, Matt Jones. Matt Jones. That's probably, you know, Matt Jones is a guy I always – I like to watch him. I thought he was a fabulous athlete. He could do a lot of great things. So, yeah, I was I was sort of intrigued watching Matt Jones, and I knew he came from Arkansas. And, and uh, you know, yeah, but Walmart, you know, yeah, you would think of that. Um, Clinton's, right? The Clinton's, yeah. President Clinton. Um, yeah. But, no, it's it's uh, it's funny because, yeah, I've been to almost every state, but for some reason I've never made it to Arkansas, Little Rock. Played with a guy. Um, oh my goodness! We were on the play ball American team together. He played at Oklahoma tight end. I think he was from Little Rock. Oh, uh, Keith Jackson. Keith Jackson. We were yeah. we were come out and we spent a lot of time that weekend at the play ball American thing for my senior. We were both seniors, and I knew he was from Little Rock. He used to talk about Little Rock all the time. So that's um that's probably my only knowledge about that that place. Yeah. Well, you made, Hey, you made Razorback fans happy. Remembering Matt Jones. He's a, he's yeah. a legend here in the States. Not many uh, quarterbacks that could be six, six, 240 pounds, run a four, three yeah. and, yeah. and run like he did. It's almost like ahead of his time a little bit uh, yeah. you know, before the spread offenses go, but coach, well, first I just really appreciate you joining us. I know it's been like a busy week, but it's exciting to have football back. And I know you're excited about the game against Arkansas on Saturday. Good luck to your team, not only this Saturday, but the rest of the season and, uh, hopefully we're able to catch up with you at some other time, but good luck to your team coach and appreciate right. you joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody listening in the locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google play. You can also get after me on Twitter at buzz John neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.